So yes, I met a billionaire. In fact, if you count people who will probably be a billionaire in the next five, 10 years, I've actually met a few of them. Um, and there are three huge lessons that I've learned from talking to these billionaires slash future billionaires. Now, I understand everybody in the comments is gonna, you know, I already see the comments coming. Like, oh, this guy's you know messing around, he's lying, he didn't actually meet a billionaire. I did, I don't have any photo evidence of it. His name was Dr. Patrick Sun Xiong, his owner of the LA Times, and I met him at a uh, basketball event. I was there with the professor, it's kind of a long story. But anyways, long story short, I met him, had a brief conversation with him, and um, after, interacting with him and interact with people like Alex Becker and Russell Brunson, these people that will probably be billionaires in the next five to 10 years, as well as many others. There's three big things that the pattern that I've seen. A uh, number one is they look at money very differently than the average person does. So uh, in America right now, the average income, the, the, the median income is like 69 grand, 70 grand, right? Um, and in many huge cities like LA, New York, you know, that's considered like poverty. That's like, that's like you're like bro when you're in that state or even when you're a little bit above that state and by a little bit above i mean you know you can be making a couple hundred grand a year and you're still on the scale of money or just a little bit above that you look at money as a means of survival you look at money as a means of like paying your bill billionaires they don't look at money like that they look at money as a fuel source so for example elon musk you know worth 200 300 you know who knows how many billion by the time you're watching this video he can literally snap his fingers and throw a hundred million dollars into any idea he comes up with absolutely crazy imagine if like you and your you and your friends are sitting down at a restaurant and one of them's like, hey dude, I have this idea for this business I wanna start. And you're just like, cool, here's a hundred million dollars. Like, and you don't even care. Like you, you could literally lose all of that money and you don't even care. Like it, it doesn't even matter. And that's what makes uh, having that much money obviously very powerful if you use it the right way. But also the point is that they look at money very differently. Now the question that becomes as well, what came first, the chicken or the egg? You know, did they look at money that way before they became a billionaire or do they only look at money that way now because they have that huge amount of money? And I think personally, it's the first. It's they looked at money differently than everyone else and that's why they ended up getting there. Because even if you don't have a lot of money right now, you can still look at money as a fuel source to fuel your dreams, your goals, your aspirations. And maybe you're not you know, investing $100 million in a startup company and that you could blow, you know, and it'd be nothing. But you could invest a few grand or a few hundred dollars or whatever you can afford to invest in yourself and growing yourself and self-education in whatever it is, right? So that's number one is they look at money very differently than, than the normal uh, American or normal human being, okay? Number two is they do not tie emotions to performance. This is a mistake I personally made for many years, okay? In fact, when I first started my business uh, that I currently have now and it became successful, what inevitably happened is I would, be, I would go on these crazy emotional highs and lows. Like, I don't know how anybody hung out with me because like one day I'm like on top of the world. I'm like, I am the king. I am the greatest. I'm, I'm amazing, right? I'm the greatest entrepreneur ever. And then like the next day, like you would think I'm like borderline depressed. Like, I'm like this is awful, right? Like I, I suck, all these things. And the problem was, is I was tying uh, emotion to my performance, okay? And what you have to realize is that your day-to-day -day performance, your minute-to-minute -minute performance, and by performance, let's, let's, I wanna be very specific with what I mean, I mean your results. That is going to vary greatly in business, okay? If you run your own company, it's gonna vary greatly. Now, overall, the trend should be up, right? So over months and months and months, the trend should be continuing to go up. But there's gonna be, you're gonna have good months, you're gonna have bad months, you're gonna have good weeks, you're gonna have bad weeks, you have good days, you're gonna have bad days. So if you sit there and judge yourself on these little micro periods of time, and you don't allow yourself to look at the big trend, you're gonna become emotional. Another way to look at it, one of my favorite books, in fact, my number one favorite book, is called uh, Psycho-Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Moll. And in chapter two of that book, he breaks down how the human brain is basically a goal-seeking machine. And it sort of works like a heat-seeking missile or a GPS guided missile. So you understand how those missiles work, right? They're flying in the air and they have a, they have a set location that they're, they're gonna you know, impact. And as they're flying, they're, every microsecond, they're calculating, okay, are we on pace or are we off pace? And if it's off pace, do you think the missile is like, wow, I suck, I'm a horrible missile? No, it just corrects its pace. It's like, hey, let me, let me get back on the right trajectory and keep going. It doesn't get mad at itself, it doesn't get sad at itself, it just fixes the problem. And that's something that you have to develop. It's a skill set you can develop and you must if you wanna be successful, whether you wanna be a billionaire or you wanna be a millionaire or you just wanna to get to the next level wherever you're at in life right now, okay? Uh, now listen, speaking of talking about getting to the next level financially, uh, as you probably know, we give out some free mini courses, okay? These are courses that we charge for all the time. But on these videos, if you subscribe, hit the notification bell and you see these videos first, randomly we'll just drop a link in some of these videos where if you're one of the first three people to see it, you fill out a little form and we'll send you a free course. Again, they're normally paid courses, we'll send you them for free to help you make money from home by giving money away okay so if you're not subscribed already make sure you subscribe hit the notification bell and with that being said let's jump back into point number three which is that billion
billionaires never settle. Case in point, one of my very good friends and early mentors, this guy named Alex Becker. Uh, I joined his mastermind when I first kind of had a little bit of success with business. Um, we were doing about $20,000 a month in revenue. And um, at that time, he was, you know, his business was doing about eight hundred to $900,000 a month in revenue. So, you know, he's about 10 years older than me. So much more successful, much more track record than I had at that time. And, you know, by all, you know, accounts, he was very, very wildly successful. I mean, he was a deca millionaire at 27, 28 years old. Um, you know, had a crazy house. He lived in Dallas at the time, like this crazy five-story mansion. Uh, had a, you know, $500,000 Lamborghini. Had, uh, you know, just everything that you could want, he pretty much had. But he was not content. He was not satisfied because he was not judging his success based on material things. He was judging his success based on his potential. And he, rightfully so, felt like his potential was much greater than where he was currently at. So much so that he literally kind of went through this like depression state. And he's never talked about this publicly, so I don't know if I should say this, but he went through this state of where he was very sad and like not happy with himself. Ended up moving all the way to a different city, moved to Austin, Texas from Dallas. Sold everything, sold his car, sold his house, sold everything, um, and started a software company. Just got rid of it, like literally just gave away his other company to the other partners. So he went from making 800 grand a month to zero, and then started a new company, a software company called Hyros, and that was at the very end of 2019 and is now the beginning of 2022 or halfway through 2022 and that, that company's worth about 300 million dollars okay so in three years he built a 300 million dollar company okay and by the way the revenue of that company is doing a lot more than what his previous company was doing and so my point in, in sharing this with you long story short don't settle just because you have things that you know society deems makes you successful doesn't mean that you're successful you get to determine what that means right and for everyone that's a different definition for me it's about constantly pursuing my potential and being the best that I can be and persevering when things get hard not saying hey you know what I have a nice car so I don't have to work hard. Now, everyone's got to work hard. That's the whole point, right? So hopefully that makes sense again. They look at money differently. They do not tie emotions to results. They never settle. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, again, subscribe, hit the, hit the notification bell so that, again, you can potentially uh, win a free course uh, when we do that drop. And uh, I will see you on the next video.